Hi, this is Paul. I'm here with you again. Today I want to do a special sort of video with you. Uh, for some time uh, now, you have probably known that I used to be a member of the Church of Christ and became a convert into the Reformed uh, Christianity, specifically um, the Reformed Baptists. Um, so I figured a lot of you would probably want to know why I made this decision, what things um, helped me to decide that I needed to disassociate from those of the Church of Christ Campbellite Restoration Movement perspective. I was born and raised in the Churches of Christ from my birth uh, for some 20 years. I guess I could say that I was sheltered in a way for the first three, four, five years of my life where I didn't get a lot of pounding directly um, from my parents at least on the distinctives of the Church of Christ and what they stood for. They were more into teaching the Bible to me and my brother and my sister. We had uh, special children's Bible stories books where um, we learned things about the basics, about creation, God, um, and faith and trust what that was all about and that was something as a, a young boy that I found fascinating and I, and I accepted it wholeheartedly without um, any type of resistance on my part I thought it was the one of the most interesting concepts in the whole world that you could come up with I remember reading a, a passage in the Bible that talked about how we had to trust the Lord or else um, we would surely die and I wrote a poem I still have it to this day on one of my tack boards I believe it was about 11 12 I remember that moment when I was contemplating that passage where I was living at the time inside the city of Coleman um, in our garage of all places and I remember how happy I was just thinking about that but by that time already we were getting drilled a whole lot my brother and sister and I um, about the distinctives of the Campbellite faith and I heard that voice in my mind from those sermons we were getting all the time immediately coming out against me saying you shouldn't think that way you've got to live a perfect life you've got to um, work 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 as they would probably say it if they would admit it to it. Um, I remember how it knocked me off my horse a little bit, but that was something, thankfully, that God kept in me and something I haven't forgotten to this day. And He allowed that to come back full force and stronger than it ever was later in my life. If you were to ask those I used to go to church with um, specifically the name of the congregation was South Coleman Church of Christ and met in the south part of Coleman um, how devoted or committed I was to the Churches of Christ um, Campbellite theology um, not to toot on my own horn or to try and make myself out to be something I'm not um, I could identify kind of with the Apostle Paul in a way. Um, really, me, my brother, and sister, we were advancing more than all the other children of our age, and everybody else knew it. Um, we were known to take um, the doctrines of the Church of Christ seriously, and we would fight vigorously for them. I remember one particular episode when I was in middle school where I got into a uh, fierce, heated debate with a, uh, a member of a church of God in the city, and it was not a very good encounter um, to my shame. Um, I was very proud, arrogant, boastful, 
all the characteristics you normally find of the die-hard Campbellot out there. At um, one point uh, at the discussion, um, the lady I was arguing with said that she would pray for me and that she would put me on her prayer list. And of course, um, in typical Campbellot fashion, I laughed it off. I didn't think I needed their prayers. Um, I had it all figured out, and everybody else was wrong, and the Church of Christ had the truth. There was no other church that was accepted except for the Church of Christ. We had a very strange way of stating it, though we wouldn't come out and say it openly. We would just defend all the points of the argument, not give the main thesis, so as to try and not bore people off. And those of my critics now out there may try and deny that, but that's exactly the way we went about doing things. Um, for me, things really began to change as I started getting closer and closer to 20. Um, I was reading and studying more on my own, starting more around then. Um, I noticed um, how human people could be in the church ranging from problems in the eldership that we had or uh, problems among the membership um, but that really didn't push me over the edge I started um, taking issue doctrinally on points um, when I did um, reading and research into the history of the Church of Christ I discovered that many of our spiritual forefathers were more conservative of sorts than we were and I was willing to fight for the more conservative position because I thought that's what we were supposed to do. One of these in particular that um, got my, as you may know, an issue among the Camelots is the use of the pitch pipe. Um, I considered it an act of hypocrisy um, with our stance against instrumental music. And there are other people out there who do that. I, made my opinions known not publicly of sorts but it quickly evolved into further about the issues um, with the Lord's Supper whether or not we should use um, one loaf or one cup or multiple loaves and multiple cups in my own research I found out that um, our forefathers in the Campbellite movement uh, embraced the position of the one loaf and they stood out against the whole practice of having multiple loaves and they were coming to a lot of the same conclusions that I was coming to that the early church um, when they met they particularly had um, one loaf one cup it was all symbolic of course then the congregations were smaller probably house churches um, but uh, I thought we were being inconsistent and when I tried to come out publicly in favor of that point I was um, politely um, kept from doing so then I went off to uh, a well-known Campbellite Christian College my first year of college at Florida College um, it's a college near Tampa Florida Temple Terrace community well known among conservative churches of Christ. Um, I started really studying more on my own then. Um, I bought my first NIV Bible. Um, really got me studying the Bible even more because I was understanding more. I didn't have the King James in front of me with Elizabethan um, uh, English. And um, I loved it. And I started moving further and further away the more I studied. I saw inconsistencies when I came back home. Um, our teachings on like issues related to Calvinism. Um, I heard a sermon on Ephesians 1 given by one of our um, evangelists at the time advocating um, a corporate election, um, the us and him, the whole idea that the election is about the in him part, those who get in him. And I remember sitting there thinking um, in the worship service that day, does grammar not mean anything? It clearly says, chose us in him. 
um, I knew the argument didn't make sense, and at the time I kind of pushed it away, and I'm, I figured, well, we probably, um, I was missing something, and something I would come back to. Um, eventually I did come back to on my own. We um, decided as a family to leave our congregation when uh, we felt like things were just beyond repair and we couldn't do anything more to help out. And as we um, worshipped at home for a good while, we um, studied that passage again and we found out that um, we didn't accept their viewpoint on predestination. That's how I came to the viewpoint on predestination. I didn't come to it by reading um, John Calvin or Luther or Dr. James White, um, anything like that. And I came to it on my own through a study of scriptures. I thought that was something that was clearly taught. Now that did get me um, hooked up with other writings. And when that did, that opened up my entire world. It just made the um, chasm even further uh, with me. Um, so predestination was one of the uh, the first of the five points that I accepted. Um, after that, um, we did decide to come back to try and make a difference um, to our congregation in Coleman that we left at the urging of some members from other congregations thinking we should come back and make a difference. And my brother and I decided to try and set up, set up a teen Bible study at the church. And we were going to try and do our best to embrace all of God's truth, even if that included predestination. Um, we found out very quickly that there was no room for what was deemed as Calvinism. Uh, the Church of Christ has spoken. Um, Alexander Campbell had spoken, Barton W. Stone had spoken, um, to accept predestination would to be um, to drop our Church of Christ identity. Um, when that happened, it severely discouraged my brother. He lost a lot of faith in the Churches of Christ as a whole. Um, he immediately withdrew. Uh, it took some more time before I did and my family. Um, the worst part was um, the leadership didn't care that my brother had decided to no longer fellowship with the Church of Christ. Um, so uh, I was determined I had to make a difference. So I, um, about 2005, somewhere around there, I believe, April 2005, um, I just decided to, when it was my turn to do a public talk, I would endorse Calvinism. And I did. It was about a 15 minute talk. I didn't quite get finished with it um, because um, the church would not let me finish it. Um, I'm working on recreating that now so that should be my next video series so you can see the reasons why I left in detail and they were all scriptural. I had a point for everything from scripture. Um, I hit a lot of the high points from John um, about our abilities, a lot of the things from Romans. Um, they didn't like it at all. Um, I was interrupted during my talk uh, asking how much more of this were we going to have to listen to. Um, at that point, um, one of the elders there rebuked the person for standing up and interrupting the sermon. He said he was out of order. We should listen to what he has to say. Um, then a deacon said, enough is enough. And... Uh, I closed my Bible and went home, and that ended my relationship permanently with the Church of Christ. Since then, um, my family and I have been worshiping at home. Um, we have um, Bible studies and worship service every Sunday, and we discuss freely those issues that divide us with the Church of Christ. 
um, with the issue of Calvinism especially. As um, when I formally broke from the Church of Christ for the last time, it allowed me to fully accept more uh, the idea of limited atonement and um, present appearance of the saints. Um, also, um, I was able to come back to the point of justification by faith and really get into those scriptures that teach it. And to me, that has been the the best thing about the whole experience was to have a complete understanding of what I understood maybe in kernel form as a, a young man and it was robbed and suppressed from me um, I don't I'm not proud of the things I did when I was with the Church of Christ um, being an ardent defender um, engaging publicly and condemning other churches these things um, are not the best points about my past but thankfully God uses those means to um, do his work among his people and call his sheep home to me that's been the best experience about it is that I've had to learn these things through adversity and those things in scripture that talk about you will be pursued for what you believe were for real and true for me um, I did go to read more of John Calvin Augustine um, I read a lot of things from Dr. White which I'm really thankful for all of these men especially Dr. White and um, AO Men Ministries um, they really helped me get a gra good grounding and helped me bring a lot of things to our congregation now and I'm still trying to make a difference the best that I can and I'm sure I probably went over a lot of things that happened in my past but this is a little taste of um, what um, God put me through and led me through and how I've, I've come home to roost of sorts um, there isn't a day that goes by now that I am thankful that um, God put me back on the track I should have been on the whole time and caused me to fully embrace um, the gospel that I heard as a young man um, just studying the Bible and having the Bible taught to me by my mom and dad that's all I've got for now thank you guys for watching my video if you're watching it and thanks for um, watching my videos on my channel I appreciate your encouragement and comments and feel free to comment on anything that you like and I hope to hear from you all soon thank you God bless